Hello BMFox here and welcome to the Cometarium unit tier list. As you know each doctrine gets different bonuses and the units of each doctrine get other unit bonuses. So it is important to differentiate the unit tier lists per doctrine. So this time I'm going to do the same thing for the Cometarium doctrine. As you might know by now the Cometarium doctrine is all about quantity. Their units are 15% cheaper. For a Cometarium army you pay 30% less upkeep. So as Cometarium is very very cheap you can really really play this fluently combine this with a good economy this is a very powerful doctrine just swamp your enemy with a lot of units and as your units are 15% cheaper you can actually rival with well the axes axes gets 15% more damage 15% more HP but your units cost 15% less so you can make 15% more units and then you're good however be careful with axes you have a damage output difference of 25% there are no real challenges versus allies. Allies armies tend to be smaller, more upgraded. You can easily swamp allies. Be aware of the Pan-Asian doctrine, however. They have 10% less hit points. You deal 10% less damage, so that's pretty much balanced. However, there are additional terrain bonuses and their extra speed, you really need to be careful. Let's go over the different tiers real fast. The S tier units are overpowered. You build these to get an edge on your opponents. The A tier are very very powerful and useful in almost all situations and no army should miss out on them. Tier B very strong and useful units. C can be a solid choice but they have downsides. D have some niche uses and F completely useless. Let's start with the commentary militia. I'm gonna rank them C. For all the other doctrines I've ranked them D but the commentary militia are actually not bad because they get a 50% bonus in the mountains and they get an additional 25% bonus in the cities and also their upgrades are one to two days sooner available which makes the Cometaran militia actually pretty dangerous infantry i'm gonna rank them b you pay 20 percent less upkeep costs for cometarian infantry on top of your already 30 percent upkeep cost bonus for cometer so that's 50 percent less upkeep and you can produce them 30 percent faster and like that was not enough their research is available one to two days sooner so you shouldn't be afraid as a cometarian player to produce infantry in high quantities the cometarian motorized infantry i'm gonna rank them d as you know i'm not a big fan of motorized infantry as they take a lot of damage versus unarmored units don't have enough health and in the case of Cometaran they don't get any bonuses neither so I wouldn't really use them for the Cometaran doctrine however if you got a lot of food in the late game anyone use motorized infantry to expand fast or grab cities you could the exact same thing counts for mechanized infantry same thing counts for Cometaran commandos and the same counts for their paratroopers honestly Cometaran doctrine have a very weak infantry branch if it wasn't for their infantry and their militia it would be really sad actually i feel it have been a little bit harsh on the mechanized infantry it still is a solid unit but as i've explained it has some downsides so i should rank it c in the ordnance branch i'm going to rank the artillery a tier you get an additional 10 percent production cost bonus so that's 25 percent cheaper in total and you can produce them 20 percent faster also the cometarian anti-tank is pretty good you get an additional 15 percent bonus versus light armored units and also minus 15 percent versus heavy armored targets so that's really really good cometarian anti-air doesn't get any bonuses at all and as they deal 10% less damage than other doctrines they are less effective against air the sp rocket artillery don't get any bonuses honestly i don't even see why you would produce sp artillery with the cometarian doctrine as you've got far superior sp rocket artillery but anyways also the cometarian sp anti-air they don't get any bonuses they even get a nerf as their upgrades are one to two days later available hence why i rank them c they are a solid choice but have <laughs> some downside which is quite the understatement all right cometarian tank branch armored car i'm gonna give them a b because this unit is a solid choice they're very useful units however cometarian armored cars don't get any bonuses so they don't deserve a rating same counts for the cometarian allied tanks they can be solid choice but also here no bonuses for cometarian doctrine the cometarian medium tank is an a star unit their research is one to two days 
these sooner available so you can upgrade them sooner to get an edge on your opponent they do 10% extra damage versus all units that's quite useful and you can produce them 20% faster however cometer and medium tanks they don't deserve to get an S rating because Axis medium tanks simply are better Axis medium tanks they move 15% faster they get an additional 10% hit points together with their Axis Doctrine bonus that is 25% more hit points than the Cometer medium tanks and also they get a 1 to 2 days uh, research sooner as they deal 15% more damage and have 25% more hit points. So Axis medium tanks definitely are better. Also the Cometer and heavy tank are a solid choice. I'm gonna rank them A but also here they cannot rival with Axis medium tanks. Cometer and heavy tanks get a 15% additional bonus versus all units but with a 10% damage nerf of Cometer that's actually only 5% over the base threshold they get an additional 10% hit points and Cometer and medium tanks are 2 days sooner available compared to other doctrines however also Axis medium tanks get 2 days sooner available compared to other doctrines so no advantage there and Axis heavy tanks they deal 10% more damage versus all units compared that with their 15% doctrine bonus that's 25% in total that's still a difference of 20% damage output and Axis heavy tanks still have 5% more hit points as well the cometer and tank destroyer is one day sooner available to be produced compared to other doctrines their upgrades also sooner available so they are a very good choice but they don't get additional bonuses for cometer the cometer air is absolutely trash I'm gonna rate the interceptors C and then I'm even being kind they can be solid choice but have some downsides they don't get any unit bonuses they deal 10% less damage due to their doctrine and their upgrades are one to two days later available compared to any other doctrine they are the weakest interceptors in the game the same thing counts for their tactical bombers no unit bonuses whatsoever deal 10% less damage the cometer and attack bomber is a bit better I'm gonna rank it B because their upgrades are one to two days sooner available you get an additional 15% hit points so they have the same amount of hit points as Axis and you can produce them 15% faster however the attack bomber for Cometer deals 10% less damage Axis attack bombers deal 15% more damage and they get additional bonuses for unarmored and heavy armored units so that's a damage difference of 40% that is a lot so i'm really hesitant about the b because this is like a b minus so i would say outclass them somewhere between b and c but we're gonna keep them in the b just so the image is beautiful cometer and strategical bomber is a good choice but no extra bonuses whatsoever and again deal 10 percent less damage that really is a mood killer and finally also cometer and naval bombers are pretty weak so i'm also gonna rank them c the reason search for naval bombers are one to two days later for the cometer and doctrine which makes them hard to compete with axis or especially panasian naval bombers as you all know i'm not a big fan of navy because they are a black hole for resources they don't conquer any provinces you can keep your coastline safe with submarines and naval bombers that will be the most efficient the same thing counts for cometer and doctrine no bonuses whatsoever for the destroyers no bonuses for the subs the cometer and cruiser however they get an additional 15 percent hit points and their upgrades are one to two days sooner available so if you want to go with a surface fleet for cometer and doctrine cruisers should be it don't forget to protect them with destroyers even though their <laughs> destroyers are not that good you need some protection against subs especially against axis subs also the battleships i'm gonna rank d as their upgrades are one to two days later available this makes uh, the worst battleships compared to all other doctrines and no bonus whatsoever for the aircraft carrier luckily however the secret branch compensates the lack of 
of muscle because the rocket artillery I'm gonna rank it as a overpowered unit. Counter is the only doctrine in the game that can produce rocket artillery at day one which is a huge advantage in the early game. Not only that but also their upgrades are sooner available and Cometern can produce their rocket artillery 20% faster. That is a huge advantage if you ask me. The Cometern SP rocket artillery I'm gonna give them an A rating. They move 15% faster that's almost as fast as an Asian. They deal with 10% extra damage versus all units so this actually negates their uh, doctrine nerf and SP Rocket Artillery for Cometern are 2 days sooner available compared to other doctrines. Flying bombs are trash, they can get shot down, no bonuses for Cometern, simply don't produce them. Same counts for rockets unfortunately, no bonuses for the Cometern rockets and they deal 10% less damage compared to other doctrines, simply don't produce them man. Rocket fighters are absolutely a very good unit and they are really really needed for the Cometern doctrine as they have a weak air compared to other doctrines. Cometer and rocket fighters don't get any additional bonuses but still you really should produce them otherwise you're gonna get annihilated from allies, Axis and Pan-Asian players who all have better air than you do. Cometer and railroad guns are the worst in the game. They do 10% less damage than all the other doctrines. They have a smaller range than Axis. They are slower than the Pan-Asian railroad guns and they do 10% less damage than allies railroad guns. Yeah yeah, railroad guns for Cometern, <laughs> really not that good. No bonuses for nuclear bombers or nuclear rockets for Cometern Doctrine. As the late Soviet Republic was actually pretty powerful in terms of atomic warfare, I feel like Call of War should give them at least some kind of buff, but they don't, unfortunately. To conclude, you can really see that Cometern Doctrine, they excel in ranged units, both the rocket artillery and artillery are pretty good. You can protect them with the anti-tanks with infantry, use a scout as an armored car, they have a pretty good tank branch so you really should produce those armored cars, light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, tank destroyers, you can stack your armored cars and your light tanks together with a spear rocket artillery so you don't lose speed and you can move fast with those units, play nice and regressive, protect your air with rocket fighters, you can use some attack bombers if you wish and you can do nothing wrong with producing the C-class units neither, but honestly I wouldn't bother uh, producing D-class units except maybe for submarines to protect your coastline or destroyers to protect your cruisers, but hey that's about it. I hope you've liked this video, if you don't agree with my choices let me know in the comments. I hope you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications. I want to say a warm thank you to my members and elite members for supporting this channel.